recording and playback of this presentation was made possible by Glee, Green Living and Energy Education. To learn more about what Glee does on behalf of individuals, businesses, and policymakers in the Florida Keys, please visit our website at www.keysglee.com. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank, thanks, Allison, and, and thank everyone uh, today for um, for taking the time. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to give you an abbreviated uh, presentation of, of what we do. It basically is an introduction to biofuels, pretty much a biofuels 101, if you will. The way we view biofuels overall, the American Biofuels Council, first of all, we are completely feedstock and fuel neutral, which means we do not advocate one particular fuel or crop, one over the other. Our view is that they all have their place to, uh, at the table, and it's going to take a diversification of the transportation fuels and their feedstocks, uh, not only in the U.S., but throughout this, uh, throughout this entire hemisphere, throughout this region. Uh, we, uh, we see energy independence and security being achieved by combining responsible, sustainable agricultural practices with innovative technological advances, uh, where the trans transformation of biomass into biofuels is a leading source of renewable fuels, and where sustainable, renewable, and affordable fuels is a reality. Um, we, our view is that is something that is not only um, desirable, it is realistically attainable for us in, in here in the U.S. Um, the benefits of biofuels, some of you may have heard some of the benefits already. Most people are aware that biofuels are indeed uh, better for the environment as opposed to petroleum. Um, there, is, there are some other issues that are involved, first of which obviously is national security. When we are um, anywhere above 49% importation of um, petroleum, uh, into the U.S., we are basically at the mercy of whoever our supplier is, whether that be Venezuela, um, Saudi Arabia, Iran, or, or whichever which other nation state is controlling the oil supply. Um, another benefit to the biofuels is obviously producing locally shortens the supply chain and keeps our keeps our dollars closer to home, and allows us to create jobs and uh, back to grow the economy as well. Um, biofuels, by and large, are sustainable and non-toxic. Um, biodiesel in particular, first and foremost, since that is the topic today. Um, you, you can literally drink biodiesel with no adverse effect whatsoever. It's, you know, it, it doesn't taste great, but it's not even going to make you sick. That's the beauty of biodiesel. Um, the other beauty is that um, when it comes to biodiesel in particular, um, the emissions are driven down so far in comparison to the petroleum diesel, the ULFD, that's being burned uh, right now, that it's, 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 there, there's no contest. Uh, it's a dramatic reduction, and I'm sure that I'm sure that the National Biodiesel Board will uh, expand upon that further in their presentation. Uh, one of the benefits as well is that um, in, a, in a cost savings, if you will, the reduction in wear on engine um, is reduced dramatically by the adding of biodiesel into the uh, into the fuel supply. Uh, there's another there's another added benefit that was that nobody was anticipating, but it turns out pretty nicely. Um, when you add biodiesel into the mix, you wind up for you wind up quieting the engine greatly. So you you don't have that loud knocking noise that's normally associated with a diesel engine. It gets much much quieter. Um, there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of hubbub in the past several months about um, the impact of biofuels and, and some of the accusations which are unfounded being that biofuels are actually worse for the environment as opposed to petroleum. That is simply uh, completely false and untrue. And the, the reality is that the uh, net energy balance or the energy return on energy invested for biofuels, as you can see at the bottom of this slide, is that just from soy-based biodiesel, there is a over, actually it's over 300% return on your investment, if you will, of energy input to do what you get back out. Um, and with ethanol, there is over an 800% return from using sugarcane as the feedstock. Um, we have a number of options for us, Then our view is that in the future it won't be, you know, so much a gas station as it will be a multi-fuel station where each island, if you will, will be different and that there will be different blends and some, and some of the islands will even be strictly dedicated to a particular fuel, whether it be ethanol, biodiesel, another alcohol similar to um, ethanol called biobutanol um, and 
essentially hydrogen. And our, our view is the, the, the reality of the phases should be short-term, mid-term, long-term. Short-term was right now we're, we're starting it. Most stations are starting to carry E10 already. Uh, the state of Florida has enacted a renewable fuel standard of E10 and B5, which is a 5% blend of biodiesel statewide uh, by 2010. The advanced biofuels, second generation, if you will, cellulosic ethanol, renewable diesel, um, better feedstocks down the line for, for, for even greater yields and lower costs. Hydrogen, most people, you know, understand that it's, it's the most abundant element in the universe and will never run out. Uh, it can be produced by utilizing wind, solar, and hydroelectric power. Uh, in that production process, there is no pollution or greenhouse gases produced. Um, right now, there is a process under development where hydrogen can be, uh, can be extracted from directly from water in vehicles. It shows, uh, the initial testing is showing a, a minimum of 10 to 20 percent increase in mile per, miles per gallon performance, and, and that's in current vehicle technology. Uh, the challenges for hydrogen, um, those technologies need to be more fully developed. Um, they are still currently much more expensive to produce and therefore not cost competitive with petroleum yet, although that will probably change as while we are enjoying a temporary lull in the price of oil, we expect that to start to go back up um, after Labor Day and going into the fall. Um, I, we, our, our view is that long term the petroleum will not go back down and stay, stay down. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dip temporarily, and then it's going to start to slowly march back up. Um, although the, the number of factors involved with the cost of petroleum um, can be anything ranging from saber rattling by, by Iran or Venezuela to a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico affecting fuel, you know, fuel prices and, and costs. Um, right now, hydrogen is still difficult to store in its liquid state, and in the U.S., it's primarily being made available in California. So California is leading the, uh, leading the charge on the hydrogen technology.